So, so talking about, so while you're on that topic, I guess regulations, I know you stay on top of, of that issue. Um, so what, what's the latest? I mean, can you kind of give me an update on uh, what's going on, I guess, whether it's over in Europe or the rest of the, rest of the globe? Uh, actually, it's related to mainly three areas. So in the US, there is CARP, the uh, California Air Resource Board, uh, which got a huge project on, on brake dust. Uh, we also see activities from Japan. There is one big group. They already set up something like a draft document on brake dust. Uh, they want to introduce a new brake dust standard uh, by the end of March of next year, so pretty soon. Okay. Um, but most areas, including China, Korea, India, they're basically following or monitoring what's going on in Europe. And in Europe, we see a lot of activities from the PMP group. That's like the particle measurement program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like one of the working parties under the umbrella of the UNEC. Uh, mm -hmm. They got the mandate to provide a roadmap on so-called non-exhaust emissions back in 2014. And uh, since that, they have been working on that, on that topic. Yeah. So it started all with like setting up new task forces. They set up two task forces. The first one dealing with like the development of a new brake test cycle. And the second one, the second task force, uh, they are handling all the uh, issues related to measurement procedures, sampling and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like the PMP, I did a little, I tried to do a little research before, obviously beforehand to kind of get a, mm -hmm get a handle on it. So the PMP, so what's the, what's the objective then? Is it to set up standards on what is actually being measured? Like, like, like the actual con um, materials uh, or is it more of how much is being emitted into the air? Or is it all that? I mean, is the goal to kind of come up with like standards to help guide the yeah. industry? I think the, uh, the main objective from PMP is definitely setting up a so-called commonly accepted methodology for measuring brake dust. Okay. So we all know where this is leading to. This will be a regulation someday. Uh, but the scope of the PMP is really setting up a commonly accepted method for measuring brake dust. Okay. And I think it also makes sense to set up these two task forces because in the very beginning, uh, you just need something like a test cycle in order to uh, have like the same kind of speed profile, uh, acceleration, deceleration profiles. Uh, they set up this new brake test cycle called WLTC Novel or WLTP Brake. It's derived from this WLTP database. So it simulates uh, something like real world driving from the five main regions, which are the US, Europe, India, Korea, and Japan. Uh, so that was the first step. But uh, once you've agreed on a, on a test cycle, you also need to make sure that you uh, are able to measure consistently, that you do a robust measurements, reproducible measurements in all the different laboratories. And that's basically the scope of the task force too, setting up a procedure on how to measure. Okay. So, so is this going to be where every country, continent comes up with their own? And then, so then for example, like the U S has their own measurement, Europe has their own, maybe Asia has their own, or is there going to be some sort of method? I mean, do you, do you foresee where they're going to try to come together where they have like a global standard? Or is that almost impossible? I think they will target a global standard. Yeah. The okay. uh, break test cycle, as I mentioned before, it is derived from the WLTP database. So a global database uh, where driving and stuff like that is, is simulated. And in the PMP group, that's also not only a European group, but we also see uh, uh, members, attendees from other regions, uh, members from CARB are uh, present in the PMP meetings. All the uh, Japanese groups, they are present. We also see attendees from uh, China, India, Korea. So I would expect that we will see something like a golden standard from Europe. And then probably all the different regions, they will do minor adjustments mm -hmm. in order to take into account the specific requirements from the different regions. Okay. No, that makes sense. So, so let me throw this at you then. Let me ask you this. So with the advancements in technology and I guess all sorts of different solutions to eliminate the emissions at the source, such as like, you know, for example, like the EV market, electric vehicles, <laughs> less demanding on the brake system therefore i guess technically maybe mm -hmm. you know reducing or you know limiting or using less brake dust is going to emit yeah. 
Yeah. Um, or there's also solutions where they're actually filtering or I guess almost like vacuuming out for lack of a term, um, emissions at the actual source on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, and also too, maybe just from a, a formulation perspective, you know, uh, maybe developing formulations that maybe have less hazardous materials in them, or maybe it, it somehow emits less materials in general. So with those things happening, if that, if that continues to evolve, is there even going to be a need for the legislation at all? Or do you think that's still going to kind of come down the course and these things are just going to kind of help with making it easier to, to adhere to those standards? Yeah, personally, I think we will see the introduction of all the solutions you just mentioned, uh, but we will also see the introduction of a legislation. Let me give uh, just one example. Like 20 years ago, the uh, legislative authorities in Europe, they uh, wanted to, uh, let's say, force the OEMs uh, to install something like a diesel particulate filter. The solutions were also uh, there. They were uh, present in the, in the different companies, but still we have a legislation now. So there is no need for the industry to really implement uh, all these solutions because they are also associated with like different costs, additional maintenance and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I think we need both. We need the solutions, but we also need a legislation. Uh, both needs to come together. Okay, got it. So, what, so then what's the, like, what's the next step? I mean, do you know, like, what's, what's going on now with, with, I guess, with PNP and some of these other things? I mean, are we just kind of, are they still just kind of in a phase of trying to organize things and get more data to understand maybe how severe or how much emissions are really being emitted? Or do they have all that and really it's just more about trying to come together to, um, I guess, put some sort of actual uh, position statement in place to say, hey, this is where things are going? Uh, no, I think at the moment it's still related to a lot of technical discussions. So if we have a look on the on the roadmap from PMP, uh, once again, speaking about the two different task forces, I think the work from task force one, when it comes to the uh, brake test cycle, this work is almost finished. So the uh, test cycle was introduced in July of last year. Um, but when it comes to uh, measurement equipment, sampling conditions, how to operate your brake dyno and stuff like that, there are still a lot of open issues and this will continue for, for the next couple of months. Okay. So initially it was planned to set up uh, a break dust legislation uh, as part of the post Euro 6 standard, which would probably come into force somewhere between 2023, 2025. Uh, at the moment we see uh, the European Commission shifting back a little bit. So in the latest presentation, they are only talking about 2000 XX, uh, which can basically mean anything. Yeah. Um, but I think the important information, it is still targeted to uh, define all the technical requirements by the beginning of 2021 and all the, let's say, subsequent steps, they're more related to like political things. Uh, so I think it's important that we continue working in 2020 on all the open issues, on measurement uh, technology, on stuff like that. Uh, so that we can be ready in 2021. I think then we'll have something like a round robin. At the moment, there are like more than 10 partners within the PMP group. Uh, so we have to make sure that the procedure defined in the PMP group is robust. It gives the same results in all the different laboratories. And once this is done, I think then we can continue in uh, setting up the drafting, setting up a little monitoring phase and stuff like that. Okay. So okay. the real introduction date, I think that's just political. Got it. Okay.